Alright guys, as we are moving forward to build up our gaming PC and covering up the case part before, now it's time to see what motherboard is chosen for this purpose. It's a tricky business choosing the right motherboard nowadays among many good featured ones due to the way that the key components are designed and manufactured, meaning performance is pretty much the same board to board as long as you are on the same chipset and using the same processor. So what if you could get a board with a style and design along with all the good features? This is the $800 all-in-one package motherboard I chose for building up my gaming PC dream. MSI X670 EAs supporting all AMD Ryzen 7000 series CPUs with AM5 socket. Without any delay, let's jump into the best features of this motherboard which mainly comes down to the support for DDR5 memory, PCI Express 5.0 on both graphic and storage, more and faster USB connectivity, better and higher grade components. Even before unpacking, you can see the back is full of good news and details about this board. From the power design to the cooling solution and the fact that it comes with 6 M.2 connectors. Opening up the box and taking a look inside, there is a ton of accessories including a quick installation guide, stickers, USB flash drive, Wi-Fi antennas, ARGB and RGB cables, SATA cables and some other great stuff like the Expander Z Dual M.2 PCIe 5.0 card and an easy front panel cable for easier installation when building a case. The board is well covered in large heat sinks from the very top down to the cover on the chipset. The rear includes a very large backplate which adds stability to the PCB along with helping to reduce the heat by acting as a cooling solution too. Although the board has a large heat sink at the top and another that's connected to the rear I.O., the CPU socket itself still has plenty of room for large air coolers on the market. Next to the CPU, you can see the board has 4 DIMM slots supporting DDR5 with a speed of more than 6666 MHz and the maximum capacity of 128 GB. Of course, it's not recommended to fully populate all the 4 slots with 128 GB of DDR5 at those speeds. Not that the board can support it, but it has to do more with the memory controller limitation than the board itself. As mentioned before, the board has the ability to install 6 M.2 drives. There are 3 PCIe 4.0 slots located between expansion slots which the bottom slot supporting 22 and 210 mm size drives and there is a full slot sitting next to the side of the DIMM slots which supports PCIe 5.0 drives from the CPU. While the first PCIe 5.0 drives aren't even on the market, it's good to know that the board is ready to go for when they launch. Of course, the box includes another two PCIe 5.0 M.2 slots as you see in here, Expander Z, to make it a total of six M.2 drives. One last thing to add in this area, next to the memory, there is this PCIe Gen 5.0 for the NVMe slot that comes with a hinge design for easier installation and removal. Looking at it from the side, there is a total of six outputs, two for media controller and the other four along with the M.2 slots all have the support for RAID 0, 1 and 10. Moving on, between the M.2 slots, we find a total of 3 PCI Express 5.0 x16 slots with the CPU bandwidth operating at x16, x8 and x4 speeds. For those who want to use the board for overclocking or troubleshooting, there is a power and reset button at the bottom of the board along with the BIOS switch to allow you to switch between the dual BIOS. Again, for OC lovers, VRAM has a 22 plus 2 plus 1 phase power design. That's 22 for the vehicle, 2 for SOC power, and 1 for miscellaneous power, allowing users for some serious overclocking. Looking at the rear I.O. alongside with X670 chipset, you notice the high-end nature of this board, packed with 10G Super LAN, Wi-Fi 6E, lots of USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, including dual 20 gigabit Type-C ports, and some buttons like the clear CMOS button, flash bias button, and a smart button which can be used to reset PC, turn off the RGB, save boot, or enable or disable turbo fan. Checking out the style and design, the RGB is a nice addition, giving you a unique glow to other parts of the system. But in case you don't like them, just disable the lighting within the MSI Center software. The bias is almost the same as before, and you can get information on processor, memory, 
storage or fan carry speeds along with other key settings for overclocking and etc. This motherboard comes with a USB flash drive which includes a bunch of drivers and MSI center, allowing you to control different aspects of your motherboard like installing the Mystic light module to control lighting or look at the system diagnosis. Now it's time to see some synthetic benchmark and power consumption according to eTechnics.com starting with the boot time and so on. Another good thing to add is that you can update the BIOS even without the CPU using a USB drive. By this time, I'm pretty much sure you must be in love with all these godlike amazing features. Oh wait, someone mentioned godlike? Well that one is for another chapter with tons of stories behind it to tell. Let me know down in the comments if you are interested in this review or comparing with the S model.